Hey guys, Dr. Mike again. And I know a lot of you were expecting me to do a video today on vaccines and the various treatments for COVID-19. But I got a very special question from Mr. Stevie Sondheim of New York City, New York. And his question is, how do we sing safely during a pandemic? And that's a great question, Stevie. So it's going to be the topic of today's video. So right off the top, singing is what we call a super spreader activity. Um, which means that like sneezing or coughing, when you are singing, you are very efficiently expelling droplets out of your mouth and into the space in front of you. And if you happen to be a carrier of the COVID-19 virus, you could be spreading those droplets to other people who, who could get sick. Uh, and as it turns out, the louder you sing, the higher the velocity of those droplets are and the further they will travel away from you. So singing is a very effective way of transmitting this virus. So basic precautions apply in any singing situation. The first is that people who are listening to you or might be in a uh, singing venue should be wearing masks and should be socially isolated, at least six feet apart from each other, just like if they were any, but anywhere else. But there are some very simple general precautions that we can apply to all singing activity. I want to go through those first. The first is that when you sneeze or when you cough, and maybe when you sing, you've probably seen these videos where the droplets can pass 20 feet away from you. As it turns out that even though those very small droplets can go a very long distance, we don't generally find the virus or any other infectious particles more than about six feet away from you. As it turns out, the droplets that carry those viruses are heavy and they fall very quickly to the floor so that we don't find any virus more than about six feet away from people, uh, even though some of the very smallest droplets can travel much further than that. So if you are a singer and you're trying to reduce your risk of giving the virus to other people, you could wear a mask, and I've done a previous video about masks and how to wear masks and what they should be made out of and how to sterilize them. So you could watch that video about that information. You could also wear a facial shield, these plastic facial shields you see people wear. Um, if you're going to wear a facial shield, it's important that the shield extends below your chin and extends laterally, at least back to the ears, so that if you do cough, sneeze, or sing, the droplets are going to be stopped before they get to somebody else. Now, the reality is that singing in a mask or singing behind a shield is not very effective or efficient. Uh, it's just not how people sing. So I don't expect people to do that very often. So let's talk about some other things we can do to make singing safer uh, when you can't wear a mask or a shield. Um, I'm proposing a somewhat arbitrary distance of eight feet. Given that uh, singing is this super efficient mechanism by which we can transmit the virus to other people, the usual six foot distance probably is not safe enough. And I would recommend eight feet between a singer and his audience, or between a singer and other singers, or between a singer and other musicians who might be on stage. So if you imagine that you're standing with the microphone, there should be an eight foot radius all around you where nobody is, a full eight foot distance. Um, people who are singing should use their own microphones. And I have a microphone right here. So if you're using your own microphone, that's the best of all worlds, so nobody is sharing a microphone. Um, that is not always possible though in some situations. And so if you're going to use microphones and share them, uh, there's a couple ways to make that a little safer. The first is that you could put a little foam cover on it. They have these covers they make from microphones. Uh, they're very inexpensive. And if everybody has their own cover, at least that would protect part of the microphone. And then you could just take the cover off when you're done singing and somebody else could put their cover on. And then after you're done singing and using the microphone and you take your cover off, you need to disinfect the microphone. So with a disinfectant wipe or a disinfectant solution so that when you give the mic to somebody else, they are not going to get infected. And that brings us to the last little thing about microphones, is that you should use good microphone technique. Um, my wife happens to be a professional singer and an audio engineer, so I'm getting this information from an expert. Uh, vocal microphones are designed to be used between one and four inches away from your mouth. And when you hold them closer than that, and a lot of people do, they'll hold them right up to their lips like this, not only are you defeating some of the technology that's in the microphone to give you good amplified sound, but you're also propelling those droplets right into the mesh of the microphone, making it harder to disinfect. So practice good microphone technique. Keep it one to four inches away from you. The other th thing that people sometimes do with microphones, which isn't appropriate, is they'll hold it like this. They'll hold it with their hand on the bulb. That also, by the way, defeats some of the technology in the microphone that makes you sound good and also passes the, the virus onto your hand or from your hand onto the microphone. So grasp it by the barrel and hold it one to four inches away from you. That's the best microphone technique. So if 
you are going to go sing in a variety of different situations. Let's talk about how you can make those specific singing, uh, singing situations safer for everybody. Uh, perhaps you're a professional singer or a talented amateur and you go to open mic uh, performances. There are ways to make open mic performances safer. Uh, the first is that a lot of times when you go to an open mic performance, and I've been to a lot, where the singer will go up to the pianist and stand behind them and re read the music over their shoulder because they don't know the lyrics. That is clearly not safe. It's not safe for the singer. It's not safe for the pianist. So you have to have your own copy of the sheet music, maybe with a music stand in front of you, so that you don't have to share it with the pianist. That's really important. Um, you really can't sing in a duo or in a group situation unless those singers can be eight feet apart. Uh, or if those singers happen to be sheltering together in the same household. Otherwise, you could be contaminating each other. So again, eight feet apart from other people. That's the rule of thumb here that I'm going to propose. Um, again, you should use your own microphone uh, if you're singing at an open mic, and if not possible, use your own cover at least. And then I recommend that an open mic venue have a single mic stand with everybody standing at that mic stand. And it's very common for people to hold a microphone and sort of wander around the audience with it or even wander in a small area. If you do that and you have an eight-foot circle sort of uh, written around the microphone, you could be getting closer than you ought to get. But if everybody is standing right at that one microphone spot, that makes it safer. So I do recommend that in an open mic situation. Uh, perhaps you're a professional musician and you teach voice lessons to other people. Um, all the things I just talked about apply. That student should be at least eight feet away from the teacher and hopefully angled away from the teacher by about 90 degrees so that if they are propelling droplets out into the atmosphere, they're not propelling them directly at the teacher. And so angled away and eight feet away. Um, the teacher, of course, should disinfect the space after the student leaves so that if a new student comes in, the space is again sterile. Um, let's talk about professional performances. So if you're in a performance venue, um, clearly, the performers need to be at least eight feet away from the audience. And in some stage situations, that's easy. You know, the audience is much further away than eight feet. But there are a lot of small, intimate venues, um, cabaret spaces and whatnot, where the audience is right on top of the stage. And that's not appropriate. You'd have to take away that front row, at least, and set the people back at least eight feet uh, apart from the singer. Uh, if you have a pianist or other musicians on the stage, they need to be eight feet apart as well. That can be difficult. Um, and then clearly, again, if there's more than one singer, they should each have their own microphone. Now, let's say you have an outdoor performance space. Outdoor performances are going to be safer than indoor performances. Ventilation is better, and we've shown that the virus just doesn't transmit as well outdoors for whatever reasons. Uh, we do know that the virus is killed by ultraviolet light from the sun, uh, of 60 seconds exposure, so maybe that's why. But I think it's more the ventilation. All the same social distancing practices should apply, though. You should be eight feet away from your audience. Performers should be eight feet apart from, them, from each other. But it would be safer if you were outdoors rather than indoors. The last singing situation I could think of was choir singing. And I think at this point uh, during the pandemic, it's just not safe to perform in a, a chorus. Uh, unless you can somehow or another get every per person that's in the chorus to be eight feet apart and eight feet apart uh, from the conductor and eight feet apart from the audience, it's just not safe. We've already demonstrated in multiple situations where uh, a single choral performance or a single choral rehearsal has passed this virus to dozens of people in just one event. So I would say until this pandemic passes, it's probably just not safe to sing in a chorus or to rehearse in a chorus. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I would appreciate if you subscribe to my channel so that you'll get uh, notified when I have more videos available. Um, I will hopefully, we'll have a new video coming out in a week or two about vaccines and about the treatment for COVID-19. Uh, and everybody out there, stay safe. Good to see you.